See why professionals like Oscar Wojnski trust Polygon for their models and textures. Sign up for free at Polygon.com to see the difference that high quality assets can make to your renders. Welcome to part five. We have uh, up until this point just been working in edit mode, right? And manually coming in here with our points and sort of moving and manipulating them. Um, but there is another method called sculpting, which can be beneficial in certain cases um, and in some cases highly, highly necessary and allows you to use brush strokes to move your vertices around. Um, and uh, that's what I'll show you right now. So uh, if we were to start sculpting here, it would just be terrible because we've got all these modifiers, right? We've got shrink wrap, solidify, subdivision, blah, blah, blah. When you start sculpting, you don't have any of that, okay? Uh, so what you need to do is apply what you want before you start sculpting. So we want all of these applied in this order. So you can go to the little drop down and hit apply, or you can use the hotkey control A and control A again. Okay, so when I do that, I've applied also that, that sub div modifier, right? So it's given me double the amount of vertices, which is uh, again, what I would need because if I go back to what it looked like before, that's not enough to really play with it. Cause what we wanna do is we wanna create some of these uh, little globules <laughs> pretend that's a word globules <laughs> little droplets that sort of bulge out so we need more vertices so i'm going to hit Control a on that and now we've got enough so sculpt mode let's do it go up to the top tab of your window there so these are workspaces um yeah all these ones along here these these are workspaces and basically it's just like a pre-configured layout so instead of having this it's just like pre-configured to work this way. Um, but you can also swap in and out of certain modes wherever you are without changing your mode um, just by hitting control tab. Um, I suppose I should turn that tool back on. Let's hit that, yeah. Okay, awesome. So sculpt mode, if you just start drawing, just paint across it, <laughs> you'll see that you've got some sculpting happening. Um, and uh, there are a number of different tools within sculpting. The draw one is the most basic. It's literally a sort of a push pull based on where it is that you're looking from. Um, it'll just basically push the surface out towards you. And then the opposite of that, if you hold down control, that is sort of the reverse of a brush. Um, so you can see that it's now digging into it. Um, so a whole bunch of these you could use. I'd say the most common is um, it's probably grab which you can use by uh, just tapping G um, or hitting that one down there. Um, and that enables you to click and pull out onto, uh, yeah, just anywhere. Um, now the brush size of this, this is really small. So you can change the brush size up here. I don't know why, but my cursor, is, my mouse is doing this weird thing where I just, it doesn't register my movement until like I start moving. It's very bizarre. Anyways, but you could, you could do it there, but actually the hotkey, which is just a far easy way of doing it is F. And then F, just you just drag out until you've got the, the size that you want, basically. And then you just do a single click. And then Shift F will give you the strength. So you can see in the top, actually, as I move, uh, it, you can see the, the strength value changing there as well. Um, but I'll just leave that as the default. And you can see, yeah, now dragging makes a lot more sense. So, you know, what is the difference between like using grab here and then using it here? I mean, it's purely, it's just like ease of use. Like which one makes more sense depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Um, so some people would find that working with grab in certain areas would be preferable and then others might find, as I do sometimes, that you want to see the mesh. You want to actually be able to like control it and take vertices and move them on specific axes. Um, oh yeah, that thing's still kicking in. I'll, I'll turn that off. Um, yeah, so so that might be useful, but in this case, you know, we, we want to do some, some sculpting. So, okay, so grab... Uh, what's another one that's really, uh, really heavily used is smooth. Um, and this will obviously smooth out detail. Now you can also temporarily activate smooth anywhere, regardless of what tool you've got just by holding down shift. So if you just use shift, um, you can see that it's just temporarily activated the, uh, the smooth tool. Um, so if you want it, because it's such a, I don't know why the default is set to 0.7. That seems way too high to me. Um, but if, if you're using another tool and you start holding down shift, you don't have the control to change the strength. The strength is still reflected over here. So if you want to, I, I would suggest turning that down to like a 0.2. And then when you use it, it's like now a lot more subtle when you use the, the smooth tool. Okay. Now the other one that eh, 
yeah, I'd say it's it's pretty it's pretty heavily used, um, even for for sculpting characters and things. Is inflate, and that is the one that we really want to use here uh, for these globules. Um, so if I just click now, if I just click in one place and I don't move my mouse, it doesn't build upon it unless you've got uh, airbrush as a setting turned on. So you can see I've, if you hit N, you're on your properties and then go to tool. This is showing your active tool. It's also here, by the way. So these are your properties, right? For your scene and everything else. But this one at the top there is active tool. So what is the difference between this and this? Nothing. <laughs> it's completely the same. Um, it was just a habit that I went to properties. But yeah, it, it's over here now. So if you turn on, let me just find it actually. There it is, airbrush. Uh, so if you, basically that enables you to, you don't have to like move your mouse. You could just click on it and leave it wherever it is that you want. And then it will just build upon that area basically. So I can click there, I can click here, um, like such, uh, like such. I don't know, <laughs> what was that video of the uh, Miss America and such as, as things and such? <laughs> I don't know, poor girl. You don't want to become a meme for something like that. So airbrush is working. It works fine over here, but it, it's not working so great over there. So I'm going to switch it back to space, which basically means it'll activate when you draw out further enough that it it thinks there's, there should be another dot there, basically. Um, but anyways, I, I'm basically looking at my reference photo again, which I can bring back by dragging this out and then going to image editor. And from the drop down, just click on this. Uh, I can see that, yeah, basically on the areas, not just on like these globule bits, but here as well, like up here, you can see that it's like a thin film of that icing, but down there, that's where it all rolls off to. So really on the outer edge there, I want to do some painting. So I'm just clicking along that edge there with the inflate brush. Um, if you find that it's, it's too much, uh, you can, you know, use shift F to turn it down and get more subtle movements or turn it up. Um, and obviously, <laughs> this will work a lot better if you have a stylus. So a stylus has the one big advantage. I mean, not just because it's, you know, you can flick, flick your wrist. That's not really the big advantage of styluses. It's, uh, it's more so because you've got pen pressure. So you can subtly do like dit, 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 and then wah, wah, and taper it and do different pen pressures. It's like even like really basic styluses will have like 2000 uh, levels of pen pressure that it'll detect as your, your, your fingers like pushing on it or whatnot. Um, whereas your mouse has one, it's a binary on and off thing. So I'm using mouse right now because I know that most of you watching are also using a mouse. So I want to show you that it is possible, but I also want to say, I recommend getting a stylus <laughs> if you can afford it. Um, and especially if you want to get into characters or, you know, don't don't rush out and invest in something before you're absolutely sure that you enjoy Blender um, and that this is something you want to do. But uh, at some point, you'll probably realize as you get into 3D more that, you know, a stylus is probably a worthwhile investment. So you can pick them up cheap, man, really cheap. Just look on like Facebook Marketplace. Just type in Wacom, W-A-C-O-M. That's sort of like the leading brand. But there's a bunch of like cheap, uh, cheaper brands nowadays. Um, that you could go to as well. Um, anyways, another one I'm going to do is just across here because we got the sculpt brush out. Why not just add a little bit of variance? Oh, the strength is too high. I'll turn that down. A little bit of variance to our top, our icing here. Why not? So I'm just doing a few little dabs, a dab here, a dab there, just to give a little bit of a wavy, wavy surface. Why not? And then also down here, although it's not really gonna be seen that much, I'll just make sure that there's a little bit of variance here, right? It's usually where it's like, it's all sort of mushed together in the center anyway, um, where there'd be like a little bit of the dough sticking out underneath. Um, I don't know. Donut shops are popular, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know if that's like a revelation to anyone else, but like, I don't know. I try to eat healthy and like avoid sugary things, right? And so I just, for my whole life, I've just been ignoring like donut shops. But then I went there to take a like reference photo or that, that video that I showed you. Um, and uh, 
I was like, wow, there's a cue. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't like a like you know artisanal uh, donut shop or anything. This was just like your regular donut king, just in the shopping center. I was like, wow. So there are people that are just like, I gotta go do my groceries. Yeah, buy a donut. <laughs> not judging, not judging. Okay. Well, I, I mean, look. Okay, everybody judges, but <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things where it's like. You, you you think the rest of the world is how you view it, right? Um, but it's 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 not. Everyone's got their own snacks. Some people would say that me eating nuts is a poor idea of a snack. Maybe it is. All right. Looking at my donut here, let's um, let's do some more. Yeah, might as well. We got the the sculpt brush out. Um, so select your donut. If you can't do that, you have to control tab. This is how I'm doing this. Or you can go up here. You have to swap to object mode, remember, before you can switch to another object to start sculpting that. So when you've got the other object selected, then Alt-Tab and do some sculpting <coughs> over here as well. So I'll do a little bit of inflation. Bit of inflation. Not hyperinflate. No, no, no. Only the U.S. government can do that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about politics or economics. I just see stuff on the news. Hyperinflation. I'm like, ooh, doesn't sound good. All right. Just a few. Meh. Maybe I need a little bit more strength. Wow, my, I don't know. Is this my blender or is this mouse? My mouse that's doing that. I don't know. It's very bizarre. All right. Or maybe I just need to reformat my computer. It's been a while. Okay. Um, how's it looking? Pretty good. I'll swap back. I'll do a little bit here, a dab here, a dab there. Um, you sort of, you, you get the idea, right? I don't need to show you everything. Um, play around with it. Grab brush, G, inflate brush, I, and uh, smooth brush. You just hold down shift wherever you want. Um, don't do it too much. That's kind of a common mistake. People smooth out things when they're sculpting. And you just smooth out all the detail. It's not good. You, do, you want to do it just a little bit here and there. Okay, and I'll pull that up there. All right, so you can see the differences, right, that sculpting has. It's more of a fluid, organic motion that you can sort of, it's, it's more creative than the edit mode where you're coming in here with the vertices, but there are pros and cons of each. Um, sculpt mode, you can't do that um, uh, snap to faces thing, right? Especially when you've got, you know, a surface like this right? That's got volume now because we've applied the solidify thing. You can't do that snap thing. So it, because we want it wrapping around our donut, it's good that we did it in this order. Um, otherwise we would be uh, out of luck. Um, it's also a little bit harder to do like this part, right? Like it's like this part needs to go out, this part needs to go in. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, there are certain things that you'll be like, oh, it's just going to be easier if I just swap into edit mode, you know, and I'll do it there. And then I'll swap back to sculpt mode when I want to do something there. Um, you just sort of get better at it. Anyways, I'm going to jump back to layout mode now, which is, uh, I guess, sort of, maybe it's more of like the default view, but layout is the one that you normally stay on. That's where I, that's, at least that's where I stay rooted. Um, and then because we've got like some of this like, yeah, like little jagged edges coming in. I'm going to add in another subsurf modifier. If you've got a, a poor computer and you find that like it's like rendering becomes complex later or it's hard to move around your viewport, you might not want to. You might want to just like delete that perhaps. But on my case, I want to, I just want to make that look nice and smooth. So that's why I've left that in. All right. Well, that is sculpting. That's good. We made some good time. Go ahead and join me in the next video as we get into materials, lighting, and rendering.